Staring at this mountain No chance I'm getting through But I've heard they can melt before you So in your name I'm asking it to move As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you've overcome, so I know I'll overcome. As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you've overcome, so I know I'm gonna overcome with you. As long as There's a real buzz in the place, isn't there? And so there should be. It's Palm Sunday. And remember how Jesus said that um, if the children didn't cheer, he'd wake the stones up. So even the stones were going to praise him on Palm Sunday if the people didn't. But we can do better than that, can't we? We are going to sing our songs of praise and really celebrate this day that heralds the beginning of the, the Holy Week really in earnest. So what better way to start on Palm Sunday than by singing Hosanna. So will you stand and we'll all sing together Hosanna.
exalted. <laughs> and you can take your seats. Good morning, everyone. Now, today's reading is going to be a little bit different, so I'm going to ask all the people I have uh, recruited this morning to come up the front, please. And then I'm going to invite all the kids to come up the front. Uh, so this morning, the way the reading is going to work is we've got a bit of a jumble. Uh, so our volunteers up the front are going to be holding two sheets of paper, each with a part of the reading. And what our kids are going to have to do is figure out what goes where. So... Uh, do we have any other kids who want to come up the front? We'll, we'll try and figure this out. Oh, we've got Maxine, can I? Oh, no, Carolyn's coming. Excellent. Fantastic. All right, so before we start fully swapping everything, <laughs> if we have a look at this, we can see it's a bit of a mess. However, I can see one thing which is really good, which is at the start of this reading, we've got a capital letter, so that's likely to go at the start of one of the sentences. At the end, we've got a full stop. Okay, that's good to see. Now, at the moment, it says, rejoice, shout, cult the end writing, comes to on a you righteous daughter Jerusalem. See your king greatly, daughter Zion, and victorious on a donkey, fall of a donkey. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. So, if we're having a look at this... What do we think we could put where? What's going to be a swap that makes sense? Yep. What have we got? We could put the um shout and the on the donk um and the um where was it? All right. So shout. We're going to move shout. That's a good idea. Now, who might shout? And if we have a look at rejoice, I can give you a hint. Rejoice is in the right spot. So if we start with rejoice, what might we be rejoicing about? Oh, we've got, we've got a rejoicing about Jesus coming. All right. So what might come next? I like this. This is some good thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you if they relieve your case, you're fine. <laughs> Oh. The end is on a donkey. The end is on a donkey? That <laughs> ah, makes a bit of sense. I do have the answer here. No, we're not going to just show you the answer. 
Would you like to move something? I can give you a bit of a hint. Yeah, maybe. All right. We're go what we're going to need to do tonight, could you take the word greatly that Brandon is holding? Go grab that. So go up to Brandon and grab the word greatly. What is he going to So, who do we think is coming? Uh, who, who do we think is going to be coming? Jesus. Jesus is going to be coming. All right. Excellent. So, we're going to put that there. And we're going to put that there. Yes. And we'll remove this. All right. All right. So, I can tell you we've got the start now. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. This is looking good. All right. So rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Oh, I think we need to start a new sentence. Is there any word that starts with a capital that might be a good one for the next sentence? Next sentence. All right. So up the front, up the front. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Now we've got shout. All right, who's shouting? Yep, so give that one to Alan. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. Good, good, good. See your king. Oh, this is really good. Comes to. Oh, no. Comes to and riding on a donkey. Uh oh. Comes to you. Righteous and riding on a donkey. Oh, <laughs> a victorious donkey, not a vicious donkey. That's okay. We're hoping it's a nice donkey. And riding on a donkey and victorious. Oh, and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey on a colt, fall of on a donkey. Oh, we've got a little bit at the end. We need to have a look at. So we're right, daughter of Jerusalem, see your king comes riding to you, righteous and riding on a donkey. Good. Righteous. Yes. Righteous and victorious and riding on a donkey. Oh. Now, and riding on a donkey, what, what we, might we need before we talk about cult? Honor. All right. Let's swap this and we'll shuffle them down. There you go. On a colt, the foal of a donkey. A big round of applause for everyone. Now, before we head down, something that's really cool about this that we need to just mention is this, although it's talking about Jesus coming to Jerusalem, this was actually written hundreds of years before before Jesus did this, all right, 600 years, that's really cool. Now, what, what is the word for it? Does anyone know what we might call it if we're looking into the future? Does anyone know? Yeah? No. No, it's all right. Yeah. Teleportation? No, not teleportation, but I like that. It was prophecy. So, this is a prophecy, looking into the future and predicting Jesus' is coming. All right. Thank you, everyone. We can now head down. That took us on a journey, didn't it? <laughs> and our next song also takes us on a journey. Crown him with many crowns. It takes us on the journey of Jesus suffering through to his glory. So let's stand and truly do this wonderful anthem justice. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>
Their Majesties King Charles III and the Queen Consort start their journey towards Westminster Abbey. For 70 years he has been the heir to the throne, but now His Majesty makes his way to be the 40th monarch crowned in Westminster Abbey, the 62nd monarch overall. And this is a journey he has made so many times in his life, but this time is exceptional and historic. And they pass the magnificent white marble tribute to Queen Victoria, who was the first monarch to take this route to her coronation in 1838. And her statue there looks directly down the mall, and she'll keep an eye on her great, great, great grandson as he travels with his king, with his queen to fulfill his destiny. And the Diamond Jubilee State Coach there, in all its glory. And the Windsor Greys, six Windsor Greys pulling the carriage, decorated with royal blue, and their main dressings are customarily crimson, but they've been changed on this occasion. And royal blue, the color selected. And the king has chosen the Diamond Jubilee State Coach with good reason. On the way back, when we see the coronation procession, they will use the glorious gold state coach, which is even more regal and sparkling, but it has no suspension, which means it's not entirely conducive to arriving in tip-top form for a long service. Queen Victoria actually refused to travel in it because of its disturbing oscillation. William IV said it was like being aboard a ship in rough seas. Even Queen Elizabeth II said it wasn't very comfortable. So instead, this coach, which is very different. It's a much smoother ride. It has six hydraulic stabilizers. It has electric windows. It has air conditioning. I'm not sure that will be needed today. It was built in Australia, and it is the newest coach in the Royal Mews. 400 books of gold leaf were used to decorate it. and they may involve chocolate. Ah, works every time. Okay, so we just saw, have a, you can have a seat if you like. Have a, have a sit down here on the front. Make yourselves comfortable. I will be asking questions. We have just seen a very big procession. Does anyone know whose procession that was? I hope you were listening carefully. King Charles. King Charles III. Who's he the king of? Good question. <laughs> Who's he the king of? Oh, well, that might be a chocolate question coming up later. Oh, oh, oh. England. England, very good. And British, the British Commonwealth. Well done. Okay, so we've just had a procession this morning as well. Did you see the procession this morning? What's a procession? What's a procession? Who knows what a procession is? Nobody? Well, this was a procession, this big, long train with the, the, all the soldiers and the cars. And the, we saw the donkey this morning, didn't we? We had a parade. That's right. We had the donkey come down. And what was on the, f on the ground in front of the donkey? Clothes. Well, oh, I wonder why there were clothes on the ground. So the donkey wouldn't hurt his feet. Absolutely right, because they didn't have very good roads in those days, did they? I'm going to see if, I, if you've been paying attention to our video clip of King Charles's famous procession and Jesus' procession this morning. So we've got a couple of boxes here, and you're going to have to pick the answer to my question. Okay? One of them says... Actually, can I get a... Thank you.
Maxine? That makes transfer of power easy. <laughs> Can you just hold those boxes for us? Okay. There we go. So, so one of these boxes says Charles III and one says Jesus. So my first question, who is going to be my first contestant? Oh my gosh, so many. How about um, Nelson? Come on up. All right. Here is your question, Nelson. What or who was riding in a beautiful coach with six white horses? Was it Jesus or King Charles? Open up the box. See what it says. Up here. Like that. No. <laughs> It's an IQ test. There we go. What does it say? Oh, coach with eight horses. Well, it was six, but close. <laughs> there you are. You are correct. You may have that one. Right, you're in the prize. Right. I'm going to swap you for a second. Oh, I've got the mic now. Oh, more questions. Oh, you're right about how hard this is to open. I've told you it's hard to open. <laughs> it wasn't just me. Hey, it wasn't just you. I think we're getting new answers new to answers. a new question. Okay. So be ready. Be ready. We'll just return Charles to his rightful place. Ah. On top of the box. All right. Okay, the next question. Who had people sing Hosanna when they went down the road? Oh. Yes. It was indeed Jesus. Well spotted. Oh, well, I know the answer. Yes, it was Jesus. I knew it was Jesus. Okay. All right. This is because we have no light-up scoreboard, you see. <laughs> now, this is a tricky one. All right, I'll try it's not to give you the one. answer before the box is open. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually going to give somebody an opportunity to win twice. Oh. And this is a harder question because it has two answers. Okay. All right. Oh, two answers. The question is, what were the people waving for King Charles, and what were they waving for Jesus? Oh, who hasn't had a big vote yet? Oh, right down there yes, in the grey hoodie. Will, want to come up? Oh, I'm sorry, Will, is it? Come up and see. Palm leaves for Jesus is the suggestion. I'm going to actually open it for you. Because it's really quite hard. It's just a... It's really hard. Can I open it? Oh, now it's easy. Palm branches. Yeah. Yeah. Palm Palm branches. branches. Well Well done. done. You get a prize. Excellent. Well done. Here's the hard question. What were people waving for King Charles? Oh. They were waving things for Jesus. What did they wave for King Charles? Do you know? Perhaps one of your brothers can help you. Ask one of them. Ask one of them. Which one? Oh, Liam. Okay. Um, I think the 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 flag. Come and find out. <laughs> what does it say? It says it flags. Says flags. Oh, well done. oh, excellent, excellent children we have here. All right, so oh. now I actually, the last no question, one. Oh. this is the last question. Last and question. And this one here is also quite tricky. Oh, um, tricky last we, question. <laughs> we've also almost answered um, this question at the very beginning because we saw lots of similarities, lots of differences. Both of these, both of these people came in a procession. Both of them had people cheering. They had wonderful things to ride on, although the donkey probably wasn't as comfortable as the coach. Oh, I don't know. That suspension... Yeah, true. (laughs) Might not have been. But both of them were kings. Were they the same kind of king? 
What do you think? What do you think? No. All right, well, you have got a choice of a box. One of these, first of all, you have to tell us, what sort of king do you think Charles is? King of what? An area. An area. An area. Area. Good yeah. time. England. What does it say? King of United Kingdom. United, United Kingdom. Kingdom. Well done. Okay, yeah. here's the trick one. This one's for someone else now. Sister. Yeah. Who hasn't had a go? Come on, sister. What is Jesus king of? King of kings. King of kings. King of kings. Any... Uh, the whole world. The whole world. The world. Anything other than the world? King of kings. More kings. King of the world. King of the, king future. Of the future. Definitely. King of the past. King of the past. King of the past. Let's find out. Ready? Uh, what does it say? King of heaven and earth. King of yeah, heaven. Kingdom of heaven and, and earth. earth. Well done. You guys were fantastic observationists. Observationists. Was there anyone who did not get a prize all right oh lots of people have not get a prize leftover prizes which oh god these boxes have got harder since this morning see i told you the boxes were hard <laughs> the lord is transpiring against me yeah Who hasn't got one? Then I've got and one. the two one. kids down here down there I'll tell you what one each yeah all right carolyn has more prizes in her own personal possession my for personal, later that's right i'm just gonna leave all this mess here for a moment um yeah there's one more thing that Jesus and King Charles had in common. And that is, and a lot of people don't know this, but after he was crowned king, King Charles went up to the altar at Westminster Abbey and he had communion. He took communion. Why do you think he did that? Because he believed in Jesus. That's right, because he actually wanted to acknowledge God and the fact that he was a king, but God is his king. So, and you know what? Jesus was also going somewhere to have a meal when he had his procession. And I think Maxine's going to I'm tell going to tell that. about that. I'm going to ask Alan to come up because he's got something to show you. And I'm going All to right. say, those people who didn't get a chocolate, come and see okay. me now. Yes. All right. So Jesus came into Jerusalem. Um, he was riding on the donkey. But lots and lots and lots of people were coming into Jerusalem. Does anyone know why? Yeah. To see the king? No. Interesting. You could try. He was coming in with everybody to take part in the Passover. It's a really, really big festival that happens once a year and anybody that can will go to Jerusalem. So what they have is a big gathering of families together, a bit like we do Christmas, I suppose, Families gather together and they have a meal together and they have lots of stories and the kids have games. All right, so lots of special food, lots of special drinks and there's a custom that they have in the breaking of bread. Now, Alan, have some bread here. Can you see that? What kind of bread is that? Is that what would you call it, yeah? Flat, Flat bread. Yeah, that's right. So that bread hasn't been baked like the loaf over here, hasn't got yeast in it. So the Passover was to remember a time long ago when the Jewish people were actually slaves in Egypt and they were rescued. The night before they were rescued, they had a special meal, but they could only eat the flatbread because it takes a much shorter time to cook. All right, And when you break up that bread, when you gather, when you remember at Passover, that's telling everybody you are part of this community. All right? You can share in this. So, yes, I know that. I know he's <laughs> under the table. All right, so I'm wondering if anybody here would like to have a piece of flat bread. Yeah, come on up. And then perhaps as you get your flatbread and go back with your families and we're going to have communion. So while the kids are getting their flatbread and coming back to you, maybe this is a good time 
for everybody to come forward to get your elements for communion, which is what we'll have next. All right? And I'll return my mic to some responsible singer. So, as we have gathered here today, as we do every Sunday, we're really acting out part of the annual Passover feast that Jesus was participating at that time that we call the Last Supper. It was um, a remembrance of deliverance, of being saved, of a hope um, that we also... Um, participate in. So during that meal, Jesus changed some of the um, elements. There are parts within the Passover meal where the bread is broken, but Jesus changed that. So we read in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus took a loaf of bread, and as we explained with the children, it wasn't a, a loaf like this. It was flatbread. And after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Please pray with me. Gracious Lord, we give thanks for this action that you gave us to connect our mind, body, and spirit with you in regular rem remembrance. We give thanks for your uncompromising love and the gift of your life. Amen. Let us eat together the body of Christ broken for you. And then we read, he took a cup. There are four cups in the Passover. It is believed the third cup was the one that he used for this. It's the cup when they have a hope for the return of Elijah. But what Jesus said was, he said, drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I tell you, I will never drink again from this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Shall we pray? 
Gracious Lord, we give thanks for your gift of life, the giving up of life that we may have it anew. Amen. Let us drink together the blood of Christ shed for you. So we continue celebrating so many reasons to praise, so many reasons to be grateful. 10,000 at least. So let us stand and sing 10,000 reasons.
Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our very best friend. We can talk to you about anything. Thank you for our families. Even our annoying brothers and sisters. For our homes and our friends. Help us to be a friend for those who don't have any. You have given us Australia where there's plenty of food, a wonderful playground to live, trees to climb, grass to roll in, insects to collect, pets to love. I think we've got a pet there. Um, lost my spot. And seas to swim in. Thank you for all these things. We worry when we hear about wars and people dying, homes being bombed. Can you fix all these things so that there are no more wars? We don't want any more wars. In this world, can you help those who don't have anything to eat, who are always hungry? And for those who are lonely and have no families or homes to live in. That's okay. That's it. That, yeah, in a minute, that one. <laughs> Show us what we can do to help them. There are a lot of people who are sick and diseased and have disabilities. Please care for them. Now you can screw it. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray these things. Please hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you. Are we on? Yes, we are on. Can we give a round of applause to our wonderful Kids Zone leaders and kids and the phenomenal um, work they've done this morning. Isn't that just great, all the effort they've put in? And the kids too. Thank you so much, kids, for the way you've led us in worship and, uh, and blessed us this morning. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, Carolyn and Maxine's comedy duo act at next year's Fringe. I think that's going to be really, really one to catch. Make sure you keep an eye out for that one. Um, I don't have heaps to say this morning. Um, I just want to tell you about a couple of gifts that I got as a kid that I didn't want. This is the first one here. It's a cricket bat. I can remember well when I got it. I was at my grandparents' house on Christmas Day just after lunch uh, when my auntie handed to me a suspiciously uh, cricket bat-shaped present. I unwrapped it and it was a cricket bat. And the problem wasn't that it was a cricket bat. I like cricket, that's fine. The problem was that morning at home, my mum and dad had given me exactly the same cricket bat. So, I was being helpful when I unwrapped it. I told my auntie, oh, I've already got this. <laughs> my mum took me aside and said, well, we just say thank you. That's the first present gift I can think of as a kid that I didn't particularly want. This is the second. It's a, a certificate saying that I got a high distinction in the Australian mathematics competition. Uh, two disclosures. First of all, I couldn't find mine. This is actually Brandon Poe Ern Young's, thanks mate, uh, for posting that online so I could get a copy of that. <laughs> Secondly, it's not actually the certificate, it's the thing behind it. Like, I think it was a gift that God gave me as a kid. Oh, I'm pretty good at maths, you know, math, science, all that stuff in school. Whatever, they, whatever the question was, I could do it, almost do it in my sleep. In fact, I think the only thing I was better at than maths was humility as a kid. Um, <laughs> just really knocked it out of the park. And, and, you know, and to be honest, it wasn't the fact that I was good at maths God had given me this gift I didn't like. It was just that I would have liked another gift a little better. You see, at my school, everyone, especially the boys, were sports mad. Sports was everything, especially cricket and football. If you were in the cricket and football teams, you were, you were cool. And if you weren't, well, you weren't. And I was, how do you say this? Uh, uncoordinated. This was back in the days when teachers would let two students be captains and then pick the teams one by one. I'm pretty sure if you did that these days you'd probably get prison time um, but back then we were allowed to do it and I was always in the bottom four. The problem was I wasn't very quick, I wasn't very agile, I struggled to catch and I couldn't kick. 
In basketball, I would hide in the corner so no one would pass to me. In cricket, I would place myself when fielding close to the batter. So at least if he hit it to me, no one would expect me to catch it. It could just hit my body and then land, and at least they wouldn't get the run. I'd be doing something. And in football, well, I had no, I still have no clue um, what to do with football. I had, I had this gift for you maths and science and things like that. I did that easy. But the gift I really wanted was around sport. Have you ever been given a gift that you didn't particularly want? Or maybe you wanted another gift more. Maybe a talent, a skill, something about who you are or something that you've received. The last few weeks here at this church, we've been looking at the different stages of faith. We've been exploring the fact that as you connect with God at different times, it can look a little different. There's an exciting stage when you first encounter God. Maybe you pray and he answers that prayer and you just know that God's there and he cares about you. And you're just so excited to connect with him. That's one stage of faith. There's another stage where you start to learn the things that Jesus teaches you. And you try it out. Like you actually try out being kind to others, giving to the poor, forgiving. And you find that it works. And that's really exciting too. There's another stage as well where you start to realize the way that God has made you. And the special ways in which you can serve in this world. And you start to do it and you realize you're a part of God's big plan to bring goodness, truth and beauty. And that's really exciting too. These three stages, really exciting and exhilarating. And then there's times where our faith isn't as fun. We talked about this last week. That there will be times when you can't really feel God. When you pray and he doesn't answer in the way that you want it when you have questions, when you have doubts. We had two names for this stage. Uh, This book we're going through calls it The Journey Inward. Another man called St. John of the Cross called it The Dark Night of the Soul. And last week, if you weren't here, there was two main things that we learned about this dark night. The first is, it's okay. Most Christians go through it. If you have a time where you can't really feel God or you have questions about God, it doesn't mean you're broken. It doesn't mean your faith is broken. It's okay. And the second thing was this, that in those times, that's when God does some of his deepest work in us. He hasn't abandoned us. He is near us. What he is doing is helping us let go of those gifts we wish we had, like even an ounce of sporting skill, so that we can trust him instead. See, God calls us, leads us to let go of those things, not because he's mean, not because he wants us to miss out, not because he has a bunch of rules and hoops that he just wants us to jump through, but because he loves us and he wants us to be happy, deeply happy, truly happy. Here's a trap, and I know it's a trap that can affect you when you're three, And when you're 103, and I think I've captured everyone's ages in the room right now, I think I've got everyone there. The trap is that you can focus more on what you don't have than what you do. You can focus on those gifts that you wish you had, those skills that you wish you had, the life that you wish you had, the job you wish you had, the family you wish you had, all of these things you can spend your life fixating on that but here's the thing when God in that dark night helps us to let go of the gifts we wish we had and trust him and said then suddenly your eyes can be open to all the good things he actually has given you and you can learn to really love the life you've been given that's what this next stage after the dark night is about it's a rediscovering god it is a wonderful stage of faith a stage where we realize that god doesn't just give to us when he answers our prayers in miraculous ways but that every single moment of every single day he's giving us life and beauty and good things constantly it's a time when we don't just feel god in church or with the sunset though that's great but we are filled with his love 
in everything, a time when we learn just how great he is, that there's no way he could fit inside the boxes that we have for him, a time when we start to love others deeply and give to others, not because we feel like we have to to be a good person, but out of the love we feel from God. That's the next stage. And in my experience, it's the happiest you'll ever be. As God teaches us, helps us, and we need him to do it. I don't think we can do it on our own to let go of those gifts we wish we had and see the gifts that he has given us. All right, kids, on your tables. One of the sheets there is on the top. It says gifts God has given me. And there's five spots. Do you know what? If you're not a kid, you can do this too. If you can write down five gifts that God's given you, it might be things or it might be a talent or an ability. And then at the end of the service, which is coming very soon, come see me and I'll have a lollipop for you. Let's pray. Our Lord and God, I want to pray right now for everyone in this room, everyone listening in who's at the beginning of that journey. And I pray more than anything else that you give them a sense of confidence and calm that they don't freak out, worry about what is coming down the track, but they might just know that you love them and you'll be with them at every stage. The stage when they feel you and it's happiness and joy and the stages when it's hard for them to feel you. May they know that you are there with them, that you are guiding them through everything, protecting them on the journey. And for those of us who are a little bit further along, maybe we've come to our walls, our dark nights, We pray for your help coming through. And we pray that we might come to that stage where we might be more like Jesus, who didn't cling to the things that most of us want to cling to, being the big flashy king with the carriage with power windows and (laughs) hydraulic suspension and all that sort of thing, but was willing Mm. just to do whatever you would have on him and found great joy in that. Please grow that in us too, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much, children, for your involvement today. It's been really lovely having you in church this morning, hasn't it, everybody? Haven't we really been blessed by our children? Thank you so much. And as somebody who's much nearer 103 than three, (laughs) I can testify that I am so grateful for the cornerstone of my life that Jesus is. And we're going to finish with that song, Cornerstone the wonderful cornerstone of our lives. Let's stand and sing together.
Uh, wonderful to have you with us, especially if you're a guest with us this morning. Thanks for coming along. Uh, we pray this service has been a blessing to you. If you'd like to get in touch online, we have our digital connect card and on the pews, in the pews as well in front of you. If you'd like to write down something for prayer requests or if you'd like to find out more about the life of the church or go on our weekly newsletter emailing list, uh, you can fill that in there, put it out in the offering box on the way out. Thank you to everyone who uh, gives to the work of this church. It's only through your generous offering that we can do that. Uh, again, if you would like to give an offering, there's no obligation. Uh, there's the box out there in the foyer for cash and ways to give digitally uh, online through our website as well. We are entering now the most significant week in the Christian calendar. Holy Week starts today, that week where we co commemorate uh, Jesus' last week before his death and his resurrection here all of lent comes to a focus a time of of gratitude of stillness of appreciation of reflection and we want to help you make the most of holy week and there's a couple of things going on for that firstly uh, the morning devotions continue here 9 30 through to 10 led by ian thank you very much for that massive and wonderful commitment that you've made throughout lent we do appreciate that we're also going to send out every day the readings for that day of holy week that track what happened that day you can receive that by email or through our social media if you just want to sit and listen and let it wash over you as we approach easter speaking of easter of course next friday we have our good friday service at 9 a.m and then our easter sunday service at 10 a.m on the sunday both wonderful services where we encounter with the events that stand at the centre of history, the centre of the cosmos, that shape everything, that make everything right and good. A wonderful celebration uh, to be a part of. Uh, just one more announcement which actually Rob's going to bring. Thanks, Rob. Good morning, church. Um, as, as part of our outreach and love in our community, this week we are going to be handing out uh, these daffodil bulbs. Um, and a little message, uh, an invite to a church service, uh, not just ours, we've uh, listed all the churches in the area, all the times and, and, uh, of each denomination, uh, and an, and an invite for you know, people to receive this free gift of Easter and uh, maybe think about attending a church uh, service. So we've got 500 of these. Well, we've only got 400 now because Lynn and I handed out uh, 100 yesterday and uh, it was fantastic. Um, I can't wait to hand out more this week. Um, the joy in people's faces when you said, you know, here's a free gift for you for Easter. And, you know, the joy in all their faces. You didn't have any refusals. And the, it, 100 went like that. It was just fantastic. So the issue that we have is that we've got to get these bulbs into single packets and uh, uh, the message stapled onto them. So... Before we have lunch, uh, we will have set up at the back uh, some tables where people can come and grab a bulb, grab a bag, and go and get the message stapled onto the bag at the end. So you weren't told that you're going to have work for your lunch today, so <laughs> sorry about that. But um, you know, this is part of our mission, and it doesn't matter whether you're out front put, handing out the bulbs or whether you just do one staple, you are involved in the mission. This is our mission as a church, so... It doesn't matter what part you play, you will be in the hands and the feet of Jesus to get the message out there of salvation for the people that are going to receive these gifts. So, yeah, hopefully... Uh, was that all you wanted me to say, dear? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, um, th these are not to be put in people's letterboxes, OK? Uh, these are to be handed out to people personally. All right, so it's not like we did at Christmas time when we gave people invites to Christmas services through a letterbox. These are to be handed out um, locally because the church services are all local. So if you don't live in the area, you're excused for not handing them out. Um, but you know, 
it's fine whether you do or not, but like I said, you can take part in just assembling these together. Okay? Good. <laughs> I'll just uh, pray over these uh, bulbs and this the here and, the, and the, um, the little slips. You'll see them all at the back anyway. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to be your hands and your feet as we uh, enter this holy week, Lord. Um, we don't know the people that we're going to pass these um, little, little invites to and this free gift of a daffodil bulb representing new life. Uh, but Father, where these people are at in their journey of faith, like we are learning where we are at in, in our faith, Lord, and it's like some are, uh, have a, had a faith and now they're not. You know, don't, they, some don't even know you exist, Lord. So people are all over the place, Lord. I pray that through these simple little a gift, Lord, and an invitation that you will work in them and they will know the gift that awaits them for eternity. And we thank you so much for the opportunities you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. So see you at back, guys. As Rob mentioned, we do have our shared lunch today starting at 11.30. Um, if you came prepared for that and you have something to share, great. If not, you're still welcome to stay around. Uh, we have extra food. Um, especially if you're not a regular attender here, we don't expect you to bring anything, but you're still very welcome uh, to hang around um, and have that lunch uh, with us as well. Right, we look forward to catching up with you uh, after the service if you're able to hang around. In the meantime, I leave you with this benediction. Oh Jesus, as we see you riding on the donkey, we pray that you would foster your servant heart within us, draw us closer to a deep and freeing trust in your Father. Go in grace, go in peace, go in love. Joy.